So there are a lot of things coming to JavaScript in 2020, probably the most notable being the optional chaining and the knowledge coalescing operator. But one other feature that is also coming is a brand new primitive data type called the big int. So what is this big int data type? And how is it different from the pre-existing number type that already exists in JavaScript? Is it going to be important for us to learn and use? You will find out about all of that plus more in this video. By the way, if this is your first time watching my video, my name is Justin, I'm a professional software developer. I release code and content on almost a daily basis, ranging from algorithms, React tutorial videos, and so on. So if you like my content, please click like and subscribe to get more coding goodness. Anyways, enough of that, on with the video. So up until 2020, there were only officially seven data types. These being the Boolean, the null type, undefined, the number type, the string type, the symbol type, and the object. Every one of these types except the object type are what's called primitive values. All right, so what are primitive values? They are what's called immutable values, meaning values which are impossible to be changed. Now, practically, this is still pretty hard to understand, so it's probably best to explain this with an example. Say we have a number variable here. Let's set a equal to three. Now it may appear that we can mutate this number. Uh, for example, we can add one to a, therefore making it equal to four. But what we did here is actually reassign a to another number rather than mutating the number three itself. So perhaps this is still not clear. Probably a string is a better example. Uh, keep in mind that strings is also a primitive value, just like a number type. Let's say this, let's set a equal to the string hello. Now let's set b equal to a. Just to confirm, b is now also equal to hello. Now this is where primitive values are different than non-primitive values. There is literally nothing we can do to b that will make us change the value of a. We can try calling the concat method to b. We can try calling the substring method to b, but these won't even mutate the value of b, let alone affect a. They will just give you a new string. You can try reassigning b to another string, say the string hi, but a will still remain hello. It is impossible to manipulate b to affect a. Now let's try the same thing with an object. Now one thing to know here is that arrays are also an object. We can know this by calling the built-in type of keyword on an array, say the array of three. As you can see, it is an object. Now let's say you set a to be an array of three, and then let's set b equal to a. And just to double confirm, b is now the array of three. Now remember, with the string, there was no way to manipulate b to change the value of a. But that is not the case here. Let's push onto b another element, say four, like so. Now what is a? As you can see, manipulating b has also changed the value of a. So the reason why this has happened is that non-primitive data types, such as an array in this case, holds a reference to a place in memory. When we set b to equal a, they were both pointing at the same place in memory. That's why manipulating b also manipulated a. This again is impossible to do with the primitive data types since primitive data types are immutable. So going back to our list of data types, the year 2020 officially introduces us to a brand new data type, a primitive data type called the big int. Now I say officially because unofficially, it was already supported by a few browsers for a couple of years now already. For example, the Google Chrome browser supported it since May of 2018. Now the reason why I say it is now official is that along with optional chaining, knowledge coalescing operator, a new promise method, and various other features, the big int has reached what's called a stage four in the ECMAScript proposal this year, which means that it is now officially part of the ECMAScript standard. ECMAScript, for those that don't know, is a collection of rules and standards that JavaScript follows. So enough talking about all of that, let's dive into what big ints are all about. Big int, as many of you guys probably already guessed, is short for big integer and it is officially the second number type that comes to JavaScript, with the number type being the first. For those with experience with other programming languages, you are probably already familiar with the concept of a language having more than one number type to represent numbers. Uh, C++, as a matter of fact, has more than six. But for JavaScript, where precise memory usage and allocation is not really the primary goal of the language, a single num number type served well for the most part. Let's get back to the console to do some coding. 
Okay, so how do we initialize a big int? Well, there's two ways. One, you can just initialize it like any other number, except by appending the lowercase letter n at the very end, like so. This will let JavaScript know that we're not dealing with a number type, but rather a big int type. We can also confirm this by calling the type of keyword on it. And the second way of creating the big int variable is by using the big int constructor function. Although it is important to keep in mind that, like the symbol type, we don't use the word new keyword in the beginning because that will result in an error. And calling it with a big int constructor function, you can pass it in a number, a string with numeric values, or even a Boolean. However, one thing to note is that big ints are, just like the name implies, integers only. That means that you can't create a big int number with decimals. So if you try to create a big int decimal, you will get an error. Also, probably obvious if you try to create a big int with some weird type, such as a null or an undefined or some just some random string, you will also get an error. So, so far, it looks like big ints are just like number types, except with the limitation of it being positive and negative whole numbers. It can't be decimals. So, I mean, what benefits does it bring to the table that the original number type didn't have? Let's check out the limitations of the number type. There is an upper bound to the number type. So let me show you guys here. Calling number.max safe integer constant gives you the safest highest number that the number type can deal with. It's called the max safe integer because of this. Let's assign this value to A. Now A is this big number that ends with 991. Doing A plus one gives you this big 992, which, is, which looks good so far. But doing A plus two, also gives you the same number, 992. Therefore, doing mathematical operations beyond the max safe integer is not always accurate, and you can't rely on it. There is also a min safe integer, by the way, which can be had by calling this. So the number type is only safe between these two numbers, the max safe integer and the min safe integer. Or to put it in a more mathematical fashion, it's safe between these two. So before the big ins were introduced, if for whatever reason you had to deal with numbers outside of this range, you needed alternative methods. Uh, some companies use strings to represent large numbers, while others use npm libraries to handle large numbers such as uh, the big number.js. But now, if we want to deal with integers outside of this range, we can use the big int data type. So what exactly is the upper limit of a big int? Well, according to MDN, it says that big ints can represent arbitrarily large numbers. This means pretty much that any numbers approaching both positive and negative infinity. So we can do crazy stuff like this. And then we add something to the big end and we still get the correct result. This is not possible with the old number type. It is not safe. So this leads to the next discussion. What are the operators that you can use with big ends? You can add two big ends together like so. You can also subtract, you can multiply, you can divide. You could get the modulus and even take the power. You can also take the negation operator on it, making it negative or making it positive from a negative a big end. You can also use the double plus to increment it as well. One caveat here is that if you divide and get back a decimal, you won't. You will get the math.floor version of the result. So for example, 5n divided by 2n will give you 2n, not 2.5n, since remember, big ends can't be a decimal. So besides this one minor caveat, you can pretty much perform most operations with big ends. One thing you cannot do, however, is to use what's called the unary operator on a big end. This operator is just a single plus sign in the beginning, and what it does is it tries to convert whatever that precedes the plus sign to a number type. So we can do something like this, plus and then the string 3.14, and then it will convert that string to a number 3.14. But using the unary operator on a big int will result in a type error that says that you cannot convert a big int value to a number. But what's funny is that you can convert the big int to a number type in different ways, such as calling the number constructor on it will try to convert that big int to the closest representation of a number as close as possible. What I mean by that is that if you pass onto the number function a ginormous big int, like so, it will give you the most accurate floating point number that the number type can give you, but you won't be as precise as a big end number itself. You can also call parseInt on it, like so, which will do the same thing. 
Another thing you can't do with big ints is that you can't perform operations by mixing up big ints and numbers. Since then, the implicit type conversion may cause you to lose information from the big int. So for example, you can't do 2n plus 1. This will result in an uncut type error. Strict equality between two seemingly identical numbers, one being a big int and the other being a regular number type, will give you back false. However, doing a loosely double equal comparison will give you true. You can also do comparison operators on big ints, giving you the correct result all the time. But what's even more interesting is that you can safely do comparison operators between a big int and a number like so. But then again, trying to do this outside of the number safe range will not always give you back the correct result. But because you can use the comparison operator between both big ints and regular numbers combined, you can use built-in JavaScript sorting methods on it. For example, making an array of both number type and big int type, you can call sort on it and you will sort correctly, assuming that you are playing within the safe number type ranges. Now let's talk about conditionals. In this regard, it works exactly like the regular number type. 0n is considered falsy, while any other big ints are considered truthy. So if we have if 0n console log something else console log something else, then it will go to the false uh, result. You can also expect this logic to hold true for logical or operators and the, also the and operator and also the negation operator. So here are a couple of examples of that below. One thing to be careful though, is that as of now, the math library does not support the big int. So if you try, for example, math.max between these two big ints, this will result in an error, since the math library functions only expect a regular number type and not a big int. And another thing you gotta be careful with is that calling json.stringify on a big int will raise a type error. However, if you do want to convert a big int to a string, you just can call the dots to string on it, which is kind of weird. So let's summarize, big ints are a new primitive number data type in JavaScript. You can construct them either by adding the letter n at the end to a number or using the big int constructor function uh, big ints deal with arbitrary large integer values, meaning no decimals allowed. You can perform most native mathematical operations between two or more big int types, although mixing big ints and regular number types is generally not allowed. You can, however, compare the two within the safe limits. You can also use big ints like numbers for conditionals, and finally, as of now, the standard math library does not support big ints. So if you're thinking what I'm thinking, you're probably wondering, huh? Big ints seems to have a lot of restrictions. And when are we ever going to use this? To be honest, and let's be fair, most of us will probably never touch big ints in our entire developer career. As a matter of fact, I'm willing to bet that even five or 10 years from now, many JavaScript developers will not even know that big ints exist in the JavaScript ecosystem. I mean, just like the symbol type, because let's be honest, how many of you guys here know what the symbol type's all about? Please comment in the uh, comment section below if you do. But for those rare people who do need to deal with numbers bigger than this gigantic number here, then big ints are for you. So while this new primitive data type is probably useless for most of us, if you're a geek like me, I hope you found some satisfaction and knowledge from this video. And on a final note, as of February of 2020, not all browsers support the usage of big ints yet, such as the Safari browser. So if you are wanting to use this in your production code, I would hold off for now. Anyways, I hope this video was informative for some of you guys. At the beginning of each year, I get really excited about the new ECMAScript proposals coming to JavaScript. So I read about them, and big ints was one of those things that really intrigued me, but I'll probably never ever use. But as I've already self-promoted my other videos a couple times already, if you are interested in learning about the other 2020 proposals, and there are some good ones, please check the description below. So this video was all about the big int type, probably more than you needed to know. The big int type, a new primitive data type in JavaScript in 2020. Guys, if you guys like my content, please click like and subscribe below. Otherwise, click dislike and let me know what the things that you want me to improve on. Also, I'm curious, do you guys think you will ever be using big ints? Let me know in the comment section below. I would love to hear some of the practical applications of it that I haven't thought about. Again, this was Justin and stay tuned for other informative coding videos like this or anything else related to coding, you will find it here. I hope you guys have an amazing day and happy coding.